Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics and Neonatology. This video is about growth hormone deficiency. I will discuss the causes, signs and symptoms, diagnosis and treatment. Human growth hormone is produced by the anterior pituitary gland. Secretion of growth hormone is stimulated by the growth hormone releasing hormone and inhibited by somatostatin. Growth hormone is secreted in a pulsatile pattern in response to exercise, sleep and hypoglycemia. It has a direct growth promoting and metabolic effects. Growth hormone also promotes growth indirectly by stimulating production of insulin-like growth factor, primarily IGF-1. Now, growth hormone deficiency is characterized by decreased growth velocity and delayed skeletal maturation in the absence of other explanations. Growth hormone deficiency may be isolated or coexist with the other pituitary hormone deficiency. Growth hormone deficiency may be congenital, such as in septo-optic dysplasia or ectopic posterior pituitary, or it may be genetic due to growth hormone or growth hormone releasing hormone gene mutation, or it may be acquired as in craniopharyngioma, germinoma, histocytosis, or cranial irradiation. Now, idiopathic growth hormone deficiency is the most common type with an incidence of 1 in 4,000 children. Now, growth hormone resistance syndrome can occur due to mutation in the growth hormone receptor or other components of the growth hormone signaling pathway. In this patient, short stature is very severe with little or no response to growth hormone therapy. One such syndrome is Lerontophism, which is accompanied with facial and skeletal dysmorphology. Next, I will discuss the clinical signs and symptoms of growth hormone deficiency. In this patient at birth, there is normal weight with only slightly reduced length. Hypoglycemia is a feature particularly when associated with other pituitary deficiencies, such as central adrenal insufficiency. Microbenus is a feature in newborn males with gonadotropin and growth hormone deficiencies. Now, isolated growth hormone deficiency in hypopituitarism is not recognized in infancy or childhood because growth retardation may be delayed until later childhood. Now, regardless of the onset in idiopathic or acquired growth hormone deficiency, primary manifestation is subnormal growth velocity. Now, other features of isolated growth hormone deficiencies include normal occipitofrontal circumference, round head, face is short and broad, orbits are shallow and there are bulging eyes with prominent forehead. These children have small nose, depressed nasal bridge with prominent nasolabial folds. Chin is also small and teeth erupt late and are crowded. There is small neck and small larynx. Voice is high pitched and it remains high even after puberty. There is proportionate short stature but weight for height is normal. There are small hands and feet. There is increased body fat, truncal obesity and decreased muscle mass and this give a perchai appearance. Now, there is limited elbow extension. In these children, hip dysplasia and slipped capital femoral epiphysis is common. There may be osteopenia and delayed motor milestone and delayed walking. There is delayed or absent puberty, genitalia are small, facial, axillary and pubic hair are absent. However, these children have normal intelligence. Next, the laboratory diagnosis of the growth hormone deficiency. Growth hormone secretion is pulsatile and serum concentration of insulin-like growth factor give reasonable estimate of the growth hormone secretion and action, especially in the adequately nourished child. It is often used as a first step in the evaluation of growth hormone deficiency. Next is insulin-like growth factor binding protein 3 levels. 
It is a less sensitive marker of growth hormone deficiency, but it may be useful in the underweight child or the children under 4 years of age. Now, provocative studies using insulin, arginine, levodopa, clonidine or glucagon are traditional, but these are not physiological and not sometimes reproducible. However, serum growth hormone levels less than 10 nanogram per milliliter in each of these two provocative tests indicate growth hormone deficiency. Now, in isolated growth hormone deficiency, X-ray wrist and elbows should also be done and these show delayed bone age. DEXA bone scan shows decreased bone mineralization, decreased lean body mass and increased adiposity. Now I will discuss the treatment of growth hormone deficiency. Recommended treatment is subcutaneous recombinant human growth hormone. It is given 7 days per week and total weekly dose of 0.18 to 0.3 mg per kg is given. With early diagnosis and treatment, child reach normal or near normal adult height. Now, therapy with subcutaneous recombinant human growth hormone is continued till near final height is achieved or when the child decides that he or she is tall enough or when the height rate is less than 1 inch per year or when the bone age reaches 14 years in the girls and 16 years in the boys. Now, some important side effects of the subcutaneous recombinant human growth hormone include benign intracranial hypertension and slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Next, another treatment option is recombinant insulin-like growth factor 1 injection. This may be used to treat children with growth hormone resistance or insulin-like growth factor 1 deficiency. But improvement in growth is not as substantial as with growth hormone therapy for the growth hormone deficiency. Okay friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health related videos.